Hi everybody, welcome to the day in the life of a laryngologist, where we are going to explore the daily routine of a laryngologist and the procedures that are commonly performed. So now let's go and meet our laryngologist, Dr. Sandra Stennett. Dr. Sandra Stennett is a board-certified fellowship trained laryngologist that practices in Memphis, Tennessee. She is passionate about creating an awareness for vocal hygiene and prevention in the Memphis community and providing state-of-the-art care in this field. Her areas of expertise include the full spectrum of disorders of the voice which ranges from the management of the professional voice, the treatment of neurological conditions of the larynx, benign conditions of the vocal fold, vocal fold paralysis, endoscopic airway and response instruction as well as swallowing disorders. She is also interested in endoscopic and office-based approaches in addition to the use of laser treatment in laryngeal disorders. Before getting started into what it's like to be a laryngologist, let's explore how a typical day goes by. Dr. Stinnett wakes up at around 4 a.m. to work out and pray to get the day going. Having time for herself is crucial as she is a surgeon and a mom of two boys under five. On her clinic days, she reviews patients' charts at around 6 a.m. to familiarize herself with the new patients and assess any pending results while responding to emails. She then heads to the hospital at around 8 a.m. to attend patients that have the full gamut of voice, swallowing, and airway disorders. Most, if not all, of these patients require a special test called a laryngoscopy with or without stethoscopes, which helps to visualize the vocal cords in high definition. The second half of her day involves in-office procedures, which includes awake vocal cord injections of spasm, fillers for vocal fold paralysis, laser for vocal fold lesions, nerve blocks of chronic cough or dilation for swallowing issues, to name a few. She usually finishes her day by 5 to 6 p.m. Operating room days typically start at 7 a.m. where she reviews the scheduled surgery with her first patient and answers any question. She also makes sure that the operating room is ready and all of the necessary equipment is functioning properly. Usually about 4 or 5 surgeries are performed on surgery days. Today is our intraoperative procedure day and we'll be doing procedures on patients under general anesthesia. A lot of the procedures will um, require us to use laser in order to ablate a lot of the lesions on the vocal cords. So most of what we do deals with cancer, early cancer of the vocal cords, um, early cancers of the voice box, any traumatic lesions on the voice box, um, from singing, excessive talking and things like that. Paralysis of the vocal cords, we put implants in, sometimes we do um, injections um, if the patient can't tolerate it in the clinic. Um, we'll do it in the operating room and airway. Um, sometimes we do some open airway procedures, a lot of endoscopic airway procedures and uh, vocal cord lesions that might be obstructing the airway. So we have a nice array of cases that we'll see today. All right, so let's go and see. So this is the operating room, and the way we get access to the voice box is we use this. This is called a glottoscope, and this goes into the mouth, and through this hole, you can see the vocal cords. So we'll show you how we use this to operate. This procedure is used to access cancer and non-cancerous lesions in the vocal fold or cysts. As previously explained, the laryngoscope is used to access the vocal folds. Using a microscope, the vocal lesions are accessed. An exercise using a microsurgical tool and KTP laser, which is important to control bleeding and removal as well as destruction of the lesions. The following task will show clips of surgery where blood and flesh will be shown. If you're sensitive to the sight of blood or flesh, we advise you to skip to minute 530. This 
procedure is commonly used to treat paralyzed vocal folds, which can result in weak and breathy voice along with swallowing issues. The vocal folds are accessed through the neck and a permanent implant is positioned to improve the voice quality. Often, the patient is kept awake to assess immediately the quality of the voice as the implant is being placed. The last procedure of the day is used to access any lesion present in the vocal fold and is performed on patients that require repetitive surgery due to recurrent respiratory issues, where non-cancerous tumors grow on the respiratory tract. Oftentimes, the patient is kept awake and does not require anesthesia. This was the end of a very productive day. A big thank you to Dr. Sinek for bringing us throughout her day. Don't forget to follow her on Instagram. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Follow us on Instagram at way underscore organization for some additional content about healthcare.